Hey, welcome to Zach of All Trades. I'm Zach, and I've got a project floating around up here that requires the use of a lathe. My problem is that my number of lathes required exceeds my number of lathes possessed by exactly one. Yeah, I don't have a lathe. So what do I do about it? Do I mope around about it? Do I lament the fact that I don't have a lathe? Do I scrub the whole project just because I don't have a lathe? Well, the problem is that the end result of this project is something that I kind of need. So I'm going to show you how to make a foot-powered lathe in a pinch. First, I need to figure out how long I want this contraption to be. These are a couple of the boards that I've got kicking around, and given the fact that I'd like this to be as versatile, even though it's kind of a cobbled together tool, I'd like it to be as versatile as possible. I'm going to use this one, which is a good, I don't know, three foot, three and a half foot long. As my base, this is going to be the base. So, since I'm not using this guy for the base, I need to turn this guy into a couple equal length pieces. So what I'm doing here is cutting a kerf on the back side of the board that I'm going to be cutting so that when I make my cuts they will be square and straight. The idea being that once I've got a little bit of a kerf there it becomes the path of least resistance when I'm cutting vertically like this. So I can I can watch this line. I can't really watch the line in the back very well. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut these curves down just a little bit further. But what it will do is it will act as kind of a guide for my saw blade in the back where I can't see it. So I can just watch this and kind of trust the back to go in the path where it's easiest. All right, now I've got my kerf cut in the back, so I'm just going to go ahead and line up my saw blade in that kerf. And now, I'll just follow right down the line where I can see with my eyeball, I'll just follow right down this line. Let's see how it's doing. Now, I haven't even looked back there except for just checking back there just now. Let's see this here. Look at that. Let's see if it'll focus. See that? It's just following right along that curve. Just like magic. Let's see how we did. I'm afraid you don't get much better than that, folks. Like it. Next, I'm going to mark the center of my board all the way down. And I'm marking that center so that I can drill some holes. I want this to be adjustable for the I don't know. I don't know the terminology. With the uh, there's the live end and then there's the dead end or solid end, whatever. I want one end to be able to move to accommodate longer or shorter stock. So I'm gonna drill some holes in this thing. There we go. Got a bunch of holes in it, and my intention is for this thing to be pretty user friendly. I don't want to have to be running around looking for a tool if I need to move it from one slot to another. So I found a couple of bolts that I had that had these nice little wing nuts. The problem is I'm going to need those to be recessed and the paddle bit that I have is not quite wide enough to be optimal. So I'm going to do plan B and instead of drilling holes I'm just going to cut a slot to the right depth, the right width, the whole length down the board. This is part of why I prefer doing stuff with hand tools. All the extra rigmarole and safety equipment and whatnot that comes with a table saw. But I'm kind of trying to get this done, and I don't really have time to do it all by with a chisel. So, table saw it is.
that's better than a bunch of extra holes anyway don't you think I think that'll work all right I've shortened this guy up a little bit as necessitated by this let me show you what I mean so I've also drilled a hole the size of the bolt and the size of the bolt head so as this bolt can go down through there all the way maybe kind of something like that let's get it all the way in there all right all the way like that the bolt then goes into that hole we then flip her over and put a wing nut on the bottom and you get the idea it gets pretty secured onto there well that's cool but now we need the business end of this thing going on so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find this coupling that I have and I'm gonna sink this into there and then from the back side will come this guy and it'll get sharpened here and that will be the spindle all right so I'm gonna want this spindle to be able to extend about two inches at maximum throw and I happen to know that two inches is from the tip of my thumb to the start of that scar right there we got a little ways to go here there we go let's check it just for giggles Pretty doggone close. I'll take it. So, now that we've figured that out, now I can figure out where to cut it off on the back. And I've got this cool little thing. If I can find it here. This little uh, crank. Majabi. That came off of some part of my camper. So, I'm going to put that on the end of it. So that I have a nice little hand crank back there. So I figure I'm going to cut this off about here. But before I cut it off, since I've still got the length on it, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it. There we go. And while I was at it, I went ahead and sharpened the other end too since I'm gonna need a point on both ends and it just so happened I couldn't have done this more perfectly if I tried where I marked it was exactly at the halfway point this is 12 and a half inches long and that mark is at six and a quarter so now I cut it off and we go from there Let's put the little crank handle on there, shall we? There we go. What's wrong with that, huh? Now all I got left to do is I'm just going to file a little flat spot so that that uh, set screw will find home and it'll be ready to go. like it was made for it perfect and now I can assemble this end that down there shove it in with something Some 
threads in here. Now we put this guy in there. Yep, I think that'll do. The other end here is just the same, built just the same way with a recessed bolt down into it. Only it doesn't need to be adjustable. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to screw this guy into there. So it will become just stationary once those threads bottom out. And it can just stay right there. Now I can get my billet of fine wood chucked up here. Would have been probably easier had I clamped the whole business down first. That's all right. We'll work with it. Yeah, that'll work. And now that I've got it sufficiently clamped down, I can turn my attention to powering this thing. This is the fun part. So I looks up in my rafters, and what do I see? I've got some PVC pipe up there. It just happened to be in the right place. So I went over one rafter and under the next and attached my rope to the end here. And what do I got? I got me a heck of a spring. So I take my rope, which is attached to said spring. I go down and I go underneath my work. I'm going to wrap it around, I think twice will be appropriate. Maybe once, but I'm going to try it with twice. And now I've got some power being returned every time with the spring. Okay, we're almost there. And now I've got the end of that rope hooked to this little foot pedal guy here. Now with the addition of a little tool rest here, I can get to work figuring out how to use this thing. This might take a minute. So while you're waiting for the next project that's coming from this thing to uh, show up, why don't you go ahead and click the thumbs up, click the subscribe, and then tell your friend about it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you will check back again soon for another one. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.